The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus according, according to Luke. <laughs> Before we get, begin with today's Gospel, I'd like to invite the children forward. We've created this nice, comfy space up here. You can go ahead and sit down up here, get comfy. If you'd like to be seated and get comfy for the gospel. I'd like to invite our um, sheepy friends to participate in the gospel. When you hear flock by night, let's say, or if you hear a sheep, you can maybe say, bah. You want to give that a try? Bah. Perfect. <laughs> That'll add a little bit of fun to um, this evening's gospel story. So let me begin. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped them in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. <laughs> then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. See, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this born in fame the city of David, the Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, <laughs> Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph 
and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. What the? The gospel response is usually praise be to the Lord Christ, but bravo, bravo. Okay, I'll take that tonight. I just love that version of the Christmas story. We tell Luke's version every Christmas. Now, if you can have a seat, I can move on with my sermon. Oh, didn't Pobre give you the heads up that I was coming? Pobre? The shepherd. He was here last year and the year before. I wasn't here last year. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pobre. Father Neil told me about Pobre. Mm -hmm. He said that Pobre interrupted the Christmas gospel, claiming that he had experienced the nativity like 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and then the following year, he showed up showing off his angel wings. Yes, but he wasn't the only one in that manger. I was there too. Yep. I'm Gus, Pobre's buddy. He talked about me for sure. Well, I wasn't there, so I can't say either way. Hmm. Well, I can. I really need to get on with my sermon about the awe of the incarnation. Not really fair, though, that he got his angel wings. I mean, what about me? Don't I deserve any recognition? I know it's cute pretending to be a shepherd from the outskirts of Bethlehem. Pretending? Well, I never. Sorry, but you don't really cut a convincing figure as a shepherd. And what's with that Monty Python accent? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't have an accent. You have an accent. You're too clean cut for a shepherd. And what's with that lump under your headscarf there? What lump? Don't play games a lump. Surely your head's not naturally shaped like that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Take off the scarf. No. Take it off or I will. No, that's assault. No, it's not. I really need to get moving here. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that, so clearly you're not Gus the Shepherd. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean any harm. What's your name? I'm Casper. I'm one of the Magi. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to be part of the Christmas Eve portion of the story for once. I mean, Matthew was a great gospel writer and all, but you know, he just sort of glossed over the whole birth narrative. I mean, all he wanted to write about was Joseph's dream. The baby was born. He named him Jesus. I know. We just read that from the fourth Sunday of Advent last Sunday. Talk about boring. I mean, Balfi, Melky, and I, we don't come along until much later. Yes, 12 days until Epiphany. Yes, well, even there, Matthew cheated us a bit. I mean, he never says anything about how blooming long we were on that road following the star. It was friggin' months. I mean, Jesus was no longer a, a, a newborn when we arrived. There were no swaddling clothes. There was no manger. There were no angels, choirs, singing and serenading us as we gazed upon the Christ child. It was all a bit of a letdown, if you ask me. I'm sorry? And that idiot Herod, I mean, all that he could do was harp on us to find out more about this uh, newborn king. You know, there's not an ounce of hospitality in that man. Well, he was obsessed with his newborn king of the Jews, and mm -hmm. I mean, his claim to the throne was pretty tenuous. Yeah. Good thing you had that dream warning you not to go back to him. Oh, well, he didn't deserve it. And that dream just confirmed my suspicions. 
So I get that your story was different, but I'm still a little bit confused why you felt the need to impersonate a nameless shepherd and be part of the Christmas Eve story. After all, you have an entire holy day dedicated to you. What you guys did was pivotal. Your names are even recorded for posterity. Yes, but it's not Christmas Eve. I mean, that's the night that counts. That's the night that everybody celebrates, singing those glorious carols. That's the night that's full of mystery and awe. Well, thank you. You managed to circle back and actually land on my sermon theme that I prepared for this evening. Really? How? You said this night is filled with mystery and awe. Mm -hmm. Awe. It's such a powerful concept, so integral to the incarnation. And without it, I, I wonder how the rest of the Christmas and Christian story would resonate. Uh, you see, you are proving my point. You have just confirmed that my epiphany is second fiddle to Christmas Eve. Not at all. You misunderstand. The incarnation may be foundational, but it's never meant to be a a single historical moment that trumps all the others. The incarnation takes place over and over again. When divinity is made human in each and every one of us. And make no mistake, it is. That's what's so awe-inspiring. That's what's so important about tonight's story. We are all part of it, whether or not we're mentioned by name. Think about it. A baby was born in a manger, nonetheless, surrounded by sheep <laughs> and dirty shepherds. Excuse me. <laughs> he couldn't have been more vulnerable. Who can't identify with that? Who in the world can't look at a newborn baby and not be filled with wonder, and concern, empathy, and awe. That awe makes us stop in our tracks and reassess. If we're gonna be, it makes us, it forces us to ask these unexpected questions. Who are we gonna be? And, how are we going to make this world worthy of something so precious and full of potential? And it doesn't matter whether that child is born of Mary and Joseph or Brittany and Oscar. Are you saying that I should see myself in this Christ child? But he wasn't an ordinary child. On the contrary, he was. But being an ordinary human child is also awesome and miraculous. Jesus may have been divine, but he was also fully human. And while you may be simply human, you too are a product of the divine. That spark of God lives in you. If you could embrace that, maybe you wouldn't feel the need to impersonate a nameless shepherd and be part of someone else's story. You must think me rather pathetic. Hardly. You're human like me. And the world we live in is always telling us that we're not enough. But we're more than enough. And if we can embrace that truth, that Christmas is not just about God made incarnate, some one person 2,000 years ago, but about the fact that Christ can be born in us over and over again as we celebrate his story, then chances are we won't need to pretend we're anything but who God created us to be. Christ born in us. Absolutely. As followers of Jesus, we are Christ's body in the world today, working to realize God's glory for all of creation. Ooh, that sounds like an awful lot of work. It is, but you're not alone. 
There are billions of people out there doing their part. You just need to be Casper. That's enough. You're sure? I'm sure. Hmm. Hmm. I feel better. <laughs> A little lighter. Like light as an angel's feather? Maybe. <laughs> we'll embrace that. That's a sign. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll be up there with the angelic choir. Oh, but I'm just Casper. Exactly. And that's awesome. That's something to sing about. <laughs> In a Chelsea's day of love, in a Chelsea's day of love. good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord! <laughs> <laughs>